Donald Trump returning to the campaign trail with a vengeance. The ex-pres blitzing two battleground states after Democrats' lawfare tried to keep him bogged down in courtrooms. First stop, Michigan, where Trump chewed up the media's bloodbath hoax and spat out that same language to describe Biden's broken border. Under crooked Joe Biden, every state is now a border state. Every town is now a border town because Joe Biden has brought the carnage and chaos and killing from all over the world and dumped it straight into our backyards. But I stand before you today to declare the Joe Biden's border bloodbath, and that's what it is. It's a bloodbath. It's destroying our country. It's a very bad thing happening. It's uh, going to end on the day that I take office. We want to get down to business. We want to just uh, get our country going again. We want to get the border closed, and we want to have people come into our country, but come in legally, right? Legally. Mm. Hold your applause, Harold. <laughs> the bedlam at the border is a top issue for American voters as criminal migrants run roughshod across the country. Team Biden and Democrats doing a little pre buttle to Trump's speech and shoveling up this pile of BS. I don't have any respect for an individual who says that the border is the most important issue, but then walks away from one of the most, you know, influential bills that could actually address the issues at the border. You can't take him seriously because, again, it's about him. Ugh. And the White House getting pantsed by Peter Ducey over the terrorism threat at the border. As the person in charge of presenting, uh, preventing a terrorist attack in the homeland, does President Biden think that some of these border crossers could be in the United States right now plotting a terrorist attack? The president's Americans. confident that uh, throughout the interagency, DHS, intelligence community, uh, that we're doing everything we can to be as vigilant as we can uh, to ensure the safety and security of the American people here at home. Jesse, it seems to me that Trump needs no hyperbole anymore because he could just state the realities. Mm -hmm. Because now the realities matches hyperbole of 2016. <laughs> right. He's taken the hoax and branded Biden's border policies with it. Mm -hmm. It's like Taekwondo. You kind of use your opponent's momentum, mm. and then you just kind of twist them around into a pretzel. Is that what it is? I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know anything about Taekwondo. <laughs> so he has challenged the president because he's got this schedule that starts on the 15th of April where he's going to have to be in court for six weeks every day save Wednesday. So... What's that going to look like? He's now going to have to do these courthouse press conferences and just blast Biden's corruption, do it in a positive way, but then also talk policy every day of the week. And then Wednesday, he has to do two first. And that's what he's doing tonight. So he's flying to Michigan, doing an event, and then Wisconsin doing another event. And that's what it's going to look like. For the next six weeks, he's going to go west, maybe on a Wednesday, do Nevada and Arizona, maybe go south, do North Carolina and Georgia, and then the weekend, no golf. <laughs> because you have to stay busy on the weekend with this being tied down to these court cases. And Michigan, he's ahead in three points right now. Wisconsin, he's just barely ahead. So this is a really tight race. And I, I just think that to compare the Biden crime wave to Trump in 2019, no one buys that except the shallowest of political hacks. Because everybody knows the Democrats breathed fire into that riot and bailed out the rioters and encouraged it. And then they tagged on all of the crazy prosecutors and no bail, all that garbage. And you, no one in their right minds believes that. So what they've done is they've taken Biden's two biggest deficiencies, the border and crime, and they've tried to call them Trump's fault. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's, it's Trump's fault Biden's border is a mess. It's the Trump crime wave. And no one, not even Harold Ford Jr., is going to buy that. Well, yeah, it's funny you bring him up, Harold. We would, <laughs> uh, you said something so interesting when we were getting massages this morning. <laughs> you said to me, you said, it's so funny, Greg. Think about how Trump was the law and order president of 2016, and now it's 2024. Maybe he was simply ahead of his time. Remember you said that? I'm, your massage must not have been as good as mine. I remember that. Before we get started and you get the jumping on me, here's everybody a Powerball right. ticket for wow, you. did it before. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, I love uh, this one. You're trying with to bribe us, aren't you? No, uh, yeah. but I do want $150 million if you win. We can share it. <laughs> I'd say a couple of things uh, about this. I, I think that I've said 
yesterday. 80% of this is the White House responsibility right now because of the ability to do executive orders. And then you put pressure on Congress, and 20% is Congress. Um, it is amazing to me how serious this issue is in uh, the corresponding lack of action on everybody's side. Let's say we take President Trump at his word and he's going to be elected president in November. That means he wants us to wait seven months uh, and perhaps another two million people, a million and a half people entering the country illegally. And the numbers would probably drive up because it would go up because if we knew today that President Trump would win those outside of the country, they'd probably all rush in even more because they believe that President Trump will shut the border down. So let's just settle on two million. You have two million undocumented illegal people, however you want to describe them here. Uh, at some point, don't the American people deserve some action from the president and Congress, uh, both sides? It's not fair that all, all the time and every time our political leaders strap on their political equipment, strap on their political warfare gear, and they go to war with each other every day uh, on television, in the newspapers, online, while everybody else suffers. We do it on guns. Whenever there's a gun thing, we always say there's mental health issues. We don't fund any mental health things. We do it on crime. No one does anything on crime. We talked about yesterday, Judge. We had a back and forth, and I don't necessarily, uh, your passion, I appreciate. I don't think it's all one person's fault. There's a system that is failing people. And if politicians don't accept that, if they're part of the, res this, this, the responsibility for this, then we're all to continue to suffer. My, my message to President Biden is do something. My message to President Trump is when they do something, don't tell your party to vote against it. Because we can't afford, even if you know or we knew, or we could certainly say, which I don't want to, that you're going to be elected president again, we would still have to wait seven months before we did anything on the border, before any new money, before any new judges, before any new asylum process reform, before we did any of those things. And I just don't think it's fair to your voters Democratic voters and people like me who are just regular old independent voting citizens who happens to lean a little Democrat to say we should just wait. Hmm. What do you say to that, Judge? Well, I disagree with Harold. I don't think that you can blame Donald Trump for the number of illegals who will riot their way or get, get into this country any which way they can. Now, you know, I, I don't want to spend time on the bill other than to say 35,000 a week is too many, more Border Patrol agents and more people to process the illegals is not what the American people want. Look, Trump is winning on this. Biden is losing on this. There's a reason. Trump makes sense. And in 2016, not every state was a border state. It is right now. And Mayorkas takes pride in saying, we have rescinded so many of Trump's immigration policies. They're just too long to list. That's all they have to do. I'm going to take your lottery back, ticket back. You keep telling me like that. Is go back, I'll take it. Is, is go back and look at what Trump did to stop them. And here, here's the truth. In one year, Joe Biden, 2023, had 2.47 million encounters with half a million known uh, gotaways and more than that unknown gotaways, which is the number that Trump had for four years. So if Trump knew how to slow it down, he knew how to stop it, not to mention that this young woman, 25-year-old Ruby Garcia, is killed by someone that Trump was deported. And I got to tell you, I take offense when... Uh, 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 what's his name, Kirby comes out and says, we are doing everything we can to ensure the safety of every American. Well, Kirby, you tell me how the guy that Trump got out got back into the country under Joe Biden and killed a woman in this country. So I don't want to hear it. The numbers are clear. The people are clear. This is Joe Biden's fault. He's letting people in because he wants more people to support him and the Democrat Party for generations. Dana, uh, it seems to me that, and we, we saw this coming, that Biden's only play is to focus on rhetoric as opposed to reality. Mm -hmm. and, and going back to what I said to Jesse, it's like all Trump has to do is draw a line, really, from the border to crime to the unsafe cities to squatting. He almost, he, he could just... He doesn't even have to raise his voice. All he has to do is, like, show the news. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, uh, because that is the case. I, I did feel that today was the first day it felt like a campaign mm -hmm. because you had the key, uh, I, one of the candidates out on the trail mm -hmm. in a key state talking about key issues. The reason it didn't feel exactly like a campaign is because the other candidate is not there. You cannot beat a candidate 
especially like a Donald Trump candidate, by putting out the campaign team for a press conference. Like she is, mm. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta try to match like with like there. And Michigan is a state that's had a lot of big ticket items happen to them since 2020. One being um, the car strike, the mm -hmm. automobile strike. You had the EVs and all that nonsense, basically losing them jobs. And now you have liberal Muslims being discontent with President Biden's position on Israel. One of the things Biden is doing, however, and you saw this in all of their advertisements today, and you're going to see this all across the country. They had a billboard that said, if Trump's elected president again, guess what happens to you? What's the number one issue? Abortions ban. Mm -hmm. Second issue is economy. Third issue is immigration. Pretty interesting that in, in, that in Michigan, not even a border state, the third issue, even in Biden's mind, is the economy. So now that they know that. So the last point I would make is Michigan has 16 electoral votes. If Biden is on the margin in Michigan, it's going to be a very long night for the Democrats because that means that Arizona, Georgia, Wisconsin, and possibly Pennsylvania are already in the bag for Republicans. Yep. All right. Well done. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.